sponsored by Pfizer. Rochester Today with Andy Brownell and Tom Ostrom on News Talk 1340 KROC AM and 96.9 FM. Good morning, Rochester Today. I'm Andy Brownell. It's Thursday. That means Tom Ostrom's with us. But this Thursday, it also means a, an abbreviated program, Tom, unfortunately. Uh, Minnesota Twins baseball starting at 1130 this morning against Cleveland. The Twins still in contention for a wild card spot in the playoffs. So it's another crucial game for the Twins. But we have business to do. So first of all, good morning, Tom. Good morning. What do you have in the mailbag? Uh, Dave listed uh, hateful uh, statements made by a variety of Democrats uh, uh, how threatening uh, Trump is, uh, uh, Nancy Pelosi and others. Uh, but then he included a statement Tim Waltz uh, said that I wasn't aware of. Tim Waltz said, Republicans are a threat to America and to democracy, and they put our lives in danger. Now, that comes from a guy who, during the riots, Waltz called Trump on the phone and said, I'm surrounded in my uh, governor's uh, home. Uh, I only have one guard out there. Uh, are, are, am I in danger? And, and, and the president said to him, well, are they carrying uh, the demonstrators carrying American flags? Yes. Well, then you're not in danger. But he said, I'll say to them, uh, you're a good man and uh, you're not responsible for this. And Waltz thanked him. Trump said it, and the people went away. And that's the danger he was, I guess. But anyway, I didn't know Waltz made a statement like that. I didn't know that either. I am tired of this over-the-top rhetoric from anybody. And then uh, Gil Gutnick sent an article that included several sources, and it indicates that Kamala picked uh, the wrong horse, as the title goes, in Tim Waltz. Uh, Democrats uh, uh, should have pick someone else, and uh, it lists some of uh, Waltz's uh, uh, faults and alleged uh, shortcomings, and it said, well, 50% of Minnesota voters like him, that saves him from going really underwater, but uh, he doesn't seem to be delivering the bump needed for victory in Minnesota, uh, or even approach uh, President Biden's 2020 uh, lead uh, of seven points and uh and uh, and the, the democrat base uh, is uh lessening their support for harris and that harris and waltz are running behind among jewish and black voters so uh whether trump's an ass uh, whether waltz is an asset to the uh campaign uh, looks doubtful in his home state particularly yeah, gee, uh, which is heavily Democrat uh, that leads uh, the Republicans by seven points in registration. So, yeah. Well, there was a Min Post poll that just came out that shows Walls's overall approval rating in the state has actually bumped up slightly, right around 50%, but 47% disapproval. So it's a it's really a 50-50 cut for him in the state of Minnesota on approval rating versus disapproval rating. Yeah. Uh, but it also shows that among likely voters, he's losing, and uh, Kamala as well, in the fight for the independent voters. They're sliding more towards Trump. Yes. And, of course, the gender differences are very stark as well. Uh-huh. Jerry, government spending and the Federal Reserve printing money are the causes of the inflation. That's got to be stopped. Basic economics. Yep. And from Rose, ABC reported the bomb threats uh, to Springfield, Ohio, are the result of the fallout from President Trump's passing on the uh, rumor that Haitians are eating pets. The mainstream media is getting out of hand. And the liberals that I know are just loving it. And then from Phil, several observations. Some political observers insist that Trump missed an opportunity to nail Harris on the spot uh, about uh, economic policies. Um, But 
are Americans better off under you and Biden or the previous administration? That question, uh, Harris dodged. Uh, the ABC moderators let her dodge it. And uh, the result now from her statements, Trump has a valuable library of 25 Harris lies, which he can use in his campaign and in his ads. Uh, and then Phil talks about why did Harris pick Waltz as her vice presidential running mate and uh, the governor of Pennsylvania would have been a stronger candidate. But Phil thinks it's, and and Newsmax thinks that it's uh, Waltz's uh, abortion policies. And uh, w one of the ABC moderators uh, challenged Trump and, and said, no, no state allows post-birth uh, abortion. And uh, Phil has oh, some oh. evidence that Tim Waltz removed the requirement to try to save babies after um, abortion. And then uh, Phil lists uh, Newsmax's statements that several states, in fact, have that policy. And he, and he lists one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten political states, including D.C., that do have that policy. Well, That's the mailbag. Just the, just the term post-birth abortion is a misnomer because you can't have an abortion post-birth. What the, what the issue is... If there is a botched abortion and the baby is born and is alive, what happens to that baby? Yeah. And it's correct in saying that the law in Minnesota has been changed, that it previously had language in it that pertained to the care of that baby in that situation. And that language has now been removed from the law. Yeah. Uh, that was my phrase, not Phil's. Oh, okay. But I couldn't think of how else to say it, but, uh, the baby survives uh, after a birth, yeah. uh, after the abortion uh, attempt. Correct. Okay. We better take a break because we have a lot to cover and not much time to do it. Tom Ostrom's here. I'm Andy Brownell, and we'll be back in a moment on News Talk 1340, KROC AM 96.9. Rochester Today with Andy Brownell and Tom Ostrom on News Talk 1340, KROC AM, and 96.9 FM. Welcome back. An abbreviated Rochester Today program with Minnesota Twins Baseball at 1130 this morning. Tom Ostrom's here. And I guess, Tom, what do you want to start with in Minnesota news with the time we have? From the KROC News website, an article written by you, Andrew, so we'll wait for your frosting on the cake. Uh, a major development at the site of the iconic Michael's restaurant in downtown Rochester, a famous restaurant, a popular restaurant. Uh, people from all over the nation came to Rochester and enjoyed it. The Rochester City Council and the Economic Development Authority and, the, and, and an organization called BGD5 will be asked to approve uh, or, and be involved in approving a two-year exclusive negotiating rights agreement concerning the property there and uh, uh, and and the Titan development that's owned by the Chafolius family, and it's designed to give the developer and the city time to negotiate an assistance package, a public assistance package. The restaurant closed ten years ago, and uh, the development calls for a 14-story. A mixed use building that will involve uh, uh, everything uh, office and student support space and uh, retail and uh, construction of a Skyway bridge over Broadway to the Hilton Hotel, uh, an extraordinary project bringing employment and activities to Rochester over a time of the, and it's uh, it'll it'll add to the skyline uh, quite a quite a plan. Yeah, it'll be interesting if it actually happens. Uh, there have been a number of projects proposed at that site since the Shafolius family acquired the Michaels property. And once again, they haven't acquired all of it. And that, that has been kind of the holdup in all of this. I believe the Pappas family, which is owned Michael, still owns a piece of it because it was an old building that was... I don't know, half a dozen or at least five old buildings all combined together. And it's really complex. 
uh, the ownership of that property. But previously, there was a much more grandiose plan for that site that included the city parking ramp and in the uh, current site of the Mayo Clinic, um, I guess, loading dock facility, that fancy loading dock that they put in where the old days in the old Carlton Hotel. But So this is a bit of a scale back from what, what was originally envisioned 10 years ago. And there's still a ton of questions. Uh, much of it assigned to student housing. Um, but there's no contracts yet with the University of Minnesota or other higher ed institutions. That doesn't mean there's not a demand for it. I'm not even questioning that. I think the bigger question is the mixed-use office retail space with so many so many thousands of square feet of empty space in buildings downtown. And is there is there a need for that? I think those are the issues the city council is going to wrestle with when this thing moves forward, because obviously there will be a significant request for public assistance, probably in the form of tax increment financing on this. And that's going to be one for the elected officials to weigh. Is it beneficial enough to Mm -hmm. have that kind of commitment of public funds towards it? Yeah. Well, quite a project with alternatives that we have yet to, see but that I, I will say that every time i go by that property I, I feel sad yeah see that largely torn down building sitting that vacant lot and nothing being done with it i and I, I think there will be a lot of desire by people in the city the uh, city council to have something fill in that site yes rochester uh care oc news website High V was named 2024's number one grocery chain in America. Uh, they have three stores in Rochester, uh, uh, Iowa Origins. And by the way, it was uh, it was created during the Depression. Right. High V. That's that's amazing. And uh, it's, it's listed as the best grocery store chain in America. And uh, uh, I, I go there uh, often, and uh, the it's employee-owned, and the slogan is "a helpful smile in every aisle." <laughs> and and uh, and Hy-Vee works with local farmers to to provide fruits and vegetables and uh, meats uh, at uh, and has it has food counters and salad bars and uh, restaurant bars and a bar, and uh, uh, they do seem to. Um, they do seem to do that smile in every aisle thing, but uh, quite an honor to a regional chain. Well, and to add to that, I know just this week, one of the local Hy-Vee employees, not at the store you visit, Tom, uh, out at, I think, the new one on West Circle Drive, and I apologize if I'm incorrect, by the name of Virgil Stoskopf. A nice German name has received the award of the legendary customer service award from hy V. I <laughs> I guess. And I, I believe it's a nationwide award for them of all of the employees. This local guy got it. So hmm. kudos for him. Mm-hmm. For Tim. Okay. Moving on national news. I know one thing I caught my eye, Tom, uh, I believe it was on Monday or Tuesday. The, uh, or Wednesday it could have been. My my clock in my brain is all messed up. The Teamsters, for the first time in my memory, did not endorse anybody for president, and they've almost, I think, exclusively endorsed Democrats for president. Mm-hmm. They have for decades. The union uh, bosses, um, yeah, they're not endorsing uh, the Democrat uh, ticket this time. Uh, union bosses uh, seem to prefer Democrats, still do. But the surprise is the members of the Teamsters overwhelmingly support Trump, and their leaders made it clear. And at the Republican convention, a couple of Teamsters spoke. Uh, and uh, th- But they represent one million union workers, and no official endorsement. But again, the workers, the laborers, the employees, uh, they do support Trump, and they've made that clear. Uh, So there seems to be a little split between management that still prefers Democrats 
uh, and and the uh, the uh, blue collar people that do so many complex and important jobs uh, across the nation. And it's quite a blow to Harris uh, and uh, quite a boost to Trump's uh, re-election. And considering what you just mentioned, the reasons behind it, not that big of a surprise either. I mean, I guess it's still a little bit surprising because the leadership of the union in the past has ignored the rank and file in its endorsements. Yeah, yeah. And this time, apparently listened. Yeah. Um, A former FBI agent uh, on CNN, he says the verbiage about Trump being a dictator is the root cause of these attempts on his life. And the statements uh, stimulate uh, mentally unstable people to carry out the mission. And uh, this FBI agent uh, says that was clear to him that what's causing all this. And he said, this is unprecedented uh, as we become more and more uncivilized, uh, the, the political diatribes continue and that's the threat and it has led to attempts on his life. And he said, I don't think it's going to end. I don't think there's any evidence that it's going to end. I, I, I agree with that assessment. I think the temperature, the hot temperature that we have that continues to spike in our political discourse in this country has created a very, very dangerous situation. Yeah, and uh, this is my editorial comment on it. I've thought about it, and it took me a while to get my thoughts together, and uh, I'm, I'm going to mention them on the air. Again, it's my thoughts. Um, others have said similar things, but to me, the attempts indicate that the media and some in the media, some Democrats and some deep, deep state uh, rhetoricians calling him dangerous, an ex- existential threat. That means existential means the word exist, the existence of America is threatened. And, uh, and I think some people who say these things are deliberately trying to encourage psychopaths to try again because they want Trump removed. He's a threat, yes, to their power, their influence, their money, their holding office. Uh, and if Trump comes in, uh, many of these bureaucrats and politicians will lose their influence, power, money. And the violence and hate, I think, comes from the left. Anti-Semitism does, anti-Israeli rhetoric does, Antifa does, BLM does. And I think if Trump is elected, uh, attorneys general and other bureaucrats of the Democrat Party will be removed and they'll they'll lose their jobs and and maybe even some will be prosecuted, according to things Trump says. And they even have said these Democrats or these leftists or these wokers that all MAGA supporters are dangerous. So that makes MAGA people targets, too, to some nutcase. And an interesting thing happened. Fox News' Peter Ducey asked the White House press secretary, quote, if after the second assassination attempt, should the White House, should you cease calling Trump a dictator and threat to democracy? And you know what the press secretary said? Peter, that question is dangerous. You shouldn't ask it. Shouldn't ask it. Yeah, the world we're living in. We have to go in just a few seconds. To Minnesota Twins baseball, unfortunately, Tom, I have I, I'm terrible. I watch movies in piecemeal, maybe 25 minutes, half an hour at a time. I started watching this new film called Civil War, and I I don't know I suppose you could look at it as being a political movie, but it really isn't. It's it's a story of a group of journalists traveling across the country, and uh, after a future civil war breaks out, and it is so disturbing and so frightening. I think. I think people should watch it just to maybe look in the mirror and look at some of the things they're saying and consider the potential consequences. Decide our differences at at the ballot box and through an exchange of ideas, not violence. Mm -hmm. I guess with that, we'll take our break and run to Minnesota Twins baseball, Tom. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We'll talk to you next Tuesday. Look forward to it. You have a great weekend. You too. Rochester today. 
He's Tom Ostrom. I'm Andy Brownell, News Talk 1340, KROC AM at 96.